Hey, it's Chat Sports NFL Draft Analyst Jack Sperry here, and today it's one of my favorite videos that I get to do throughout the course of the NFL calendar year, which is I get to rank my top quarterback prospects in the 2024 NFL Draft. I've watched the film, I've gone over the box scores, I've done all the research for you guys, uh, and today I'm going to be letting you know the 12 quarterback prospects that I have a draftable grade on heading into the 2024 NFL Draft. I can't wait to break down these quarterback prospects with you guys today. But if you want more content from me on social media, you can find me at Jack underscore Sperry on Twitter. I put out mock drafts just about every single week. I have these rankings up on there as well. Uh, and then also at SparedDog.Football on Instagram. So I really do appreciate all of your support. So if you want more NFL Draft content from me, go ahead and give me a follow on social media. So let's start with the number one quarterback on my list, and this is kind of the consensus here, and I'm not going to be devi deviating from it, and it's Caleb Williams, all right? Plain and simply, this guy is straight up special. And, you know, the term generational talent gets thrown around, especially at the quarterback position, way too much. Caleb Williams is really the first guy that I've encountered that is really worth that designation. Truly special pocket presence along the lines of guys like Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, Kyler Murray, some of the best I've ever seen. Caleb Williams has that gift, and he's going to be bringing that day one to the National Football League. And then he combines that pocket presence with incredible playmaking instincts and arm talent. So he can throw from any angle, from any platform, and make any throw on the field. It is simply unbelievable the kinds of plays that this guy can make every single game. And if you watch just one game of Caleb Williams on film, he's going to make six, seven, sometimes even eight high-level NFL caliber throws every single game. And that is just unbelievable. You just don't see that with quarterback prospects entering the National Football League. Now, the cons with Caleb Williams that you're going to see is that he's going to have a, a, couple, a little bit of a fumble issue heading into the league. He likes to hold the ball with one hand, so he does fumble a little bit too much. And then you look at the, and then you look at the hero ball tendencies that he had in his last year there at USC. Terrible offensive line, not the best weapons to work with either, uh, so he kind of felt like he had to put on the Superman cape and kind of play that way. But when he plays within structure, perfect pocket footwork. He can read defenses really well. He is the most complete NFL QB prospect I have ever evaluated. And honestly, it's not that close. I've been doing it for seven years, so I can't reference back to Andrew Luck or John Elway or any of those top guys in the past. But in terms of my time doing this, he is the best QB prospect I have ever evaluated. And my pro comp, and I know it's lofty, and I don't want to put this kind of expectation on the young kid, but it is Patrick Mahomes because it is the play style that I'm looking at here. Somebody that can beat you from within the pocket, somebody that can definitely beat you out of the pocket, and somebody that can beat you with his legs. And honestly, Caleb is even faster than Patrick Mahomes. Now, does that mean that he's going to be better than Patrick Mahomes? No, it doesn't. He has to prove it in the National Football League, just like Mahomes has done. But in terms of a true pro comp, the closest thing that I have seen to Patrick Mahomes, bar none, is Caleb Williams. Now, predict it for me. Down there in the comments section, will Caleb win an MVP award in the National Football League at some point in his career? Give me a yes or give me a no for today's pinned comment. YouTube's going to throw you an ad break here in just a couple of seconds. When that happens, take advantage of that time by answering today's pinned question with a yes or no. My number two quarterback is the last year's Heisman winner out of LSU, Jaden Daniels, because I really like the combination of high-end upside with really clean pocket mechanics and really clean uh, throwing mechanics and footwork as well. So you look at the pros there. He's a dynamic rusher. I think he's a top three quarterback rushing uh, guy in the league right away. Uh, the touch passing is really good down the field. It's a really catchable football 30, 40 yards down the field. That's something I really like. The deep ball accuracy is definitely there. And then I really like that he pairs clean upper body mechanics with really balanced footwork. He plays with good base, and that's something that you really want to see in a quarterback prospect coming in in terms of accuracy, consistency. Now, he's not a perfect prospect here, guys, all right? Passing over the middle of the field is not his strong suit. He turns down a lot of open receivers over the middle of the field, and that's something that's going to have to be developed at the next level. Level. Also, when he's getting outside of the pocket and he's working out of structure, he's not going out to be a passer. He is going out to be a rusher. And 
uh, the big thing about the rushing thing here is that, yes, it's dynamic, but I'm also worried about it, the style of rusher that he is. And he doesn't slide. He doesn't give up his body. He doesn't learn to take 8 to 10 yards and then slide. He wants to go for the home run every time. And because of that, he takes some very, very hard hits. And at his slender frame, that gives me concerns about injuries later on down in his career, potentially broken bones. However, he does have that high-end upside, so I have a top five grade on him. And I think the Washington Commanders should take him with the number two overall pick. My pro comp form is that he's skinny Justin Fields. He has a very similar profile to Fields when he was coming out of Ohio State all those years back. And, you know, depending on how you feel about Fields uh, to this point in his NFL career, I guess it's kind of how you feel about this comp. Uh, but I was really high on Justin Fields coming out of Ohio State, and I'm still relatively high on Fields at this point in his NFL career and want to see him get another shot to start in the league because he is super dynamic as a rusher. Jaden Daniels is on that level in terms of grade for me. The number three, and this is probably the most polarizing quarterback prospect uh, out on Twitter right now, and it's Drake May out of UNC. I have him third because like Jaden Daniels and Caleb Williams, he has that really high star quarterback upside. All right, he's got the arm strength. He's got the size. He's got the athleticism. He's got all the tools that you look for, plus he has really good playmaking instincts. I mean, this guy had a left he had a left-handed touchdown pass last year, for Christ's sakes. All right, this guy can make plays out of structure. However, the two big knocks on him is his pocket footwork, which is super sloppy, and that leads to accuracy inconsistencies. I mean, there's at least five to six throws per game when you watch Drake May throughout this last season where it's an easy throw close to the line of scrimmage, like a hitch route or a five-yard out route. Throws that should be automatic for NFL quarterbacks, and he skunks it. Terrible accuracy, not even a chance for the wide receiver to catch it. That needs to be fixed heading into the National Football League. And I think if you fix the footwork, things can uh, get better and he can turn into a potential star quarterback in the National Football League. But what May needs heading into the league is he needs a quarterback's coach, an offensive coordinator, a head coach, whatever, that really places a focus on his footwork. Clean that footwork up. Uh, so that the accuracy can come in turn. And if he can get more consistent with his accuracy, we might be looking at a bona fide franchise quarterback here that's top 10 list every single year in the National Football League. My pro comp for him is Deshaun Watson when he was coming out of Clemson. Very similar profile, bigger guys with good but not quite elite arms in terms of the top of the top, but truly special playmakers, and they can get out and make plays out of structure. So my pro comp for Drake May is Deshaun Watson. Now coming up here, more quarterback scouting reports on guys like J.J. McCarthy, Michael Penix Jr., Bo Nix, and more. But before we get into those scouting reports, make, uh, make sure you check out our friends at Game Time today, which is the fastest and easiest way to buy tickets for all the sports, music, comedy, and theater near you. For me, guys, I love to get tickets last minute, whether it be a concert with my girlfriend Cassie or going to an MLB baseball game or an NBA basketball game, whatever the case may be, all I have to do is take out my Game Time app, search their awesome, super easy to use, user friendly interface, and then I know that they have the lowest price guarantee on any ticket to any event. And because I like to get tickets last minute, Game Time is perfect for me because they have flash deals right before Game Time, before the event. Uh, that drive the prices down even lower. So it's fantastic if you're somebody that likes to get tickets the day of the event. And Game Time is the only ticketing app that gives you complete peace of mind with your purchase every single time. See the view from your seat before you buy the tickets so you know exactly what to expect when you arrive at the arena. And tickets are also sent directly to your phone instead of your email, which just adds another level of, uh, of ease to your ticket buying process. Take the guesswork out of buying tickets with Game Time today. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code CHATSPORTS. That's one word, all caps. It's right down there in the bottom right of your screen for $20 off your first purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code CHATSPORTS. That's one word, all caps, for $20 off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price, guaranteed. So for me personally, guys, I have Michael Penix Jr., number four on my list. And I'm a little bit higher, I think, on Penix than some other people out there. Now, when you look at Michael Penix Jr.'s film, especially that semifinal game against Texas, multiple high-level NFL-type throws down the field. And that's what's going to really attract Michael to a lot of these NFL teams. 
The arm strength is for real. The deep ball accuracy is definitely for real. He fits it into some really tight windows, 20-plus yards down the field. He reads defenses really well, particularly down the field. Some other quarterbacks in this class have a tough time reading, rotating safeties, all these different things that pro quarterbacks need to do to target down the field effectively. Michael Penix Jr. does that extremely well. And then the people that you talk to around the Washington Husky organization there, uh, they just absolutely – uh, rave about this guy's leadership, his intangibles, his preparation, his dedication to the game. It's all there. Now the cons. He's not going to be much of a playmaker for you outside of the pocket, either with his legs or with his arm. He did run a 4-5-3, 40-yard dash at his pro day, but because of the multiple injuries he's had to his lower half, I think he's going to be more of a pocket passer, and that definitely shows on his film. He'll go through his, project, uh, project, uh, pro, his uh, progressions, and then he'll get to his check down, very rarely does he escape the pocket, and then when he does that, he's not that effective. Another con is kind of some wonky mechanics to his throwing mo motion, which isn't a huge deal because we've seen some bad throwing mechanics with guys that have had success in the league, so that doesn't worry me too much, but that is something to keep in mind. And then injury concerns, of course, he's had multiple major injuries to his lower half, and I really do think that he's going to be the type of guy, because he's a true pocket passer, you need to surround him with the right things, and it's really going to depend on fit whether or not Michael Penix Jr. is going to be a success in the National Football League. He's going to need good protection with good offensive line because he's not going to be able to get outside the pocket, evade rushers, and do all these different things that other guys in this class can do. You have to protect him well. You need good weapons for him to target down the field to, and then you need a good offensive play caller that can scheme things open for him in structure because out of structure, he's really not going to give you all that much. Now, my pro comp for Michael Penix Jr. is Phillip Rivers because guess who else had a really wonky throwing motion, super push, push throwing motion? That was Phillip Rivers, but it didn't matter because he got the job done, and that's what I see when I look at Michael Penix Jr. It's a little bit weird. He's a lefty. He's a push thrower, all these different things, but he's got a cannon. He puts it on a dime down the field, and he's really good at reading defenses, so I think Michael Penix Jr. has a real shot to have success in the National Football League. Then at number five, I have J.J. McCarthy out of Michigan. Now, there's top five buzz around McCarthy right now. Personally, I am not somebody that thinks he is worthy of a top five pick. I have a late round one grade on J.J. McCarthy. And I think that McCarthy is somebody that could probably win in like an elite situation, like a great offensive head coach, elite weapons, great protection around him. But is he going to be somebody that's going to be able to carry a franchise and be worth $50 million on his second contract one day? Personally, I don't think that. Now, the intangibles are certainly there. Leadership, the ability to perform in the clutch, all that's great. And he's a really tough guy as well. He really stands in the pocket. He's not afraid to take a shot to the face. That's something I really like. Plus, he's got a decent athletic profile. He's a plus rusher. I wouldn't say he's dynamic like a Jaden Daniels, but he can get the job done with his legs. Pretty darn good uh, thrower on the run as well. And then the arm strength is legit. I wouldn't say it's like Caleb Williams level special, but it's definitely a good NFL arm and he pairs that with good pocket footwork. Now, the cons with McCarthy, accuracy concerns, particularly outside the numbers and 20 plus air yards down the field is where he really struggles with his accuracy. Uh, and if he's going to be a high level NFL quarterback, those need to be fixed. And because his mechanics are already pretty clean, I'm not sure if it can be attributed to anything mechanically that he's doing. It might just be part of his DNA there. Uh, conservative decision-making is something I'm really concerned about as well. There was multiple times where he had an open post route for a touchdown on film there at Michigan, and he took a five-yard check down instead. That tells me that he's not seeing the defense the way he needs to be seeing it, and he's playing uber conservative, trying to stay ahead of the sticks. Now, it's much better than throwing it into harm's way, but I'd rather have him see defenses better and attack down the field when there's opportunities. And then touch passing, uh, he just throws like a 93-mile-per-hour fastball. He doesn't have that change up over the middle of the field to layer footballs in between defenders. That's something that's concerning to me a little bit. But listen, man, I think that his film is a lot closer to Bo Nix, who I have ranked number six. We'll get to him in a second than it is to kind of the high-end elite talents in this class like Caleb Williams, Jaden Daniels, and Drake May. Could J.J. with a good roster and a good head coach and all these different things turn into a decent starter into the National Football League? Absolutely, but he's going to need a lot of help in my opinion. I don't think he's the type of guy that's going to be able to carry a team with his talent level. Now, my pro comp 
for Mr. J.J. McCarthy is I think he's a smaller version of Daniel Jones, right? Conservative decision maker, uh, good outside the pocket, plus runner, uh, all these different things, and then accuracy issues deep and outside the numbers. This is, a, this is pretty much a one-for-one one comparison for me, only Daniel Jones is 6'5", and J.J. McCarthy is 6'2 and a half. Then number six on my list, I have Bo Nix, who, is, who has the most experience out of any college quarterback in the history of the NFL draft. So he's got he's played a lot of football, all right? But he's played a lot of college-level football and college-level offenses. And that's really the big takeaway I have from Nix is that in Auburn, it was a college-style offense. And then in Oregon, it was a college-style offense. Lots of screens, lots of short passing, lots of quick game. Not a whole lot of high-level throws on his film that make me feel confident that he's going to be a high-end NFL quarterback in the National Football League. Now, he's very intelligent. He's a good decision-maker. He doesn't put the ball in harm's way. He's generally pretty accurate with the football, and he's a pretty decent playmaker as well. I also have a round one a grade on Mr. Bo Nix. But when I'm talking about a guy like this, somebody that's been in college for as long as he has and he hasn't really shown the ability to be a high-level passer throwing the ball down the field from the pocket, it screams NFL backup quarterback to me. All right, this is somebody that I feel like you can bring in as like a good backup option that can get to his first read, make a good decision, and if that first read isn't open, he can leave the pocket and try to make something happen as a playmaker. And I definitely think that that is more of a backup skill set than as a franchise quarterback in the National Football League. My pro comp for Bo Nix is Kenny Pickett. Both of them are older coming into the National Football league. Kenny was 24 when he was drafted, uh, and Kenny's just not really somebody that moves the needle, and I feel the same way about Bo Nix. They both have decent arm strength. They're both decent playmakers out of the pocket, but overall, it's just unremarkable as a skill set. So at the end of the day, I think Bo Nix will probably end up being a backup in the National Football League. Now, let's speed things up a little bit here because I got six other names to talk about here, six other quarterbacks that I have draftable grades on that I want to talk about before the end of today's show. So let's go to number seven on my list. The only round two grade I have on a quarterback this year is Spencer Rattler out of South Carolina. Uh, I think that he's got the arm talent that you look for, really clean throwing mechanics, uh, but footwork can be an issue. Decision making can be an issue and maturity has been an issue of his in the past. He's trying to alleviate that with the various amounts of visits that he's taking with all these different NFL teams. So if you're a team that needs a quarterback and you miss out on one of these QBs in round one, Spencer Rattler is probably going to be your choice in round two. Then number eight, Michael Pratt out of Tulane. I have a round three grade on him because I just don't really see him as a, as a starting quarterback whatsoever in the National Football League. I feel pretty good that he's going to be a good backup. Uh, and if you're looking for a, 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 you know, a backup to have for the next four or five years and you can just lock it in, Michael Pratt is your guy. Very solid grade for Michael Pratt. The number nine, Jordan Travis, is coming back from that really gruesome leg injury from last year. Uh, on his film, I think he's ninth because he's not really going to move the needle in terms of big-time playmaking. Like J.J. McCarthy and Bo Nix, it's a lot of conservative decision-making. It's a lot of throws close to the line of scrimmage. And he's got some playmaking upside you know, here and there, but uh, with that injury, I think that definitely drives him down a bit. I have a round four grade on him. Number 10, I got Talia Tugavailoa in round six. Uh, he's smaller. His arm strength is definitely not there, but he can process defenses, and he's a pretty darn good playmaker outside of the pocket. I was impressed with his performance in the Shrine Bowl here in Frisco, Texas a couple of months back, and I think that if you're looking for somebody to come in and like training camp and try to earn a spot on the team as like a QB3, I think you could do a lot worse than Talia Tungavailoa. Number 11, Joe Milton out of Tennessee. Listen, he's got all the tools that you want, super good athlete, cannon of an arm. Of course, he does like the backflips or whatever after his pro day throws. Man, yeah, like that's so awesome. But he's not good at football, right? He needs to really develop his mental processing, his vision, his footwork, his accuracy. There is so much work that Joe Milton has to uh, have in the National Football League to even have a prayer at being a quarterback in this league. So even though you like the tools, maybe you're a team that late round, you know, quarterback three, let's develop him, see what we can get out of him. Sure, but anything before that, I don't think uh, Joe Milton is worth that. Then number 12, my last quarterback on this list, round seven grade for Devin Leary. If there's anybody that's going to surprise people in this draft, in my opinion, it's probably going to be Leary. He's got clean throwing mechanics, throws with good footwork, a pretty decent mental processor, but I really don't see 
him being anything more than like a high, like a high end backup or anything like that in the league. But at the end of the day, round seven, I like Devin Leary quite a bit. So who's your sleeper? Let me know down there in the comment section which late round quarterback has the best chance to succeed in the National Football League. Do you think it's Joe Milton? Do you think it's Jordan Travis? Do you think it's somebody else? Let me know what you guys think down there in the comment section. Who's your sleeper QB in this year's NFL draft? Thank you guys for bearing with me today. I know this is a little bit of a longer video today, but I think that the content definitely bears it out. If you want more content from me, again, I am at Jack underscore Sperry. If you want more NFL draft analysis all throughout uh, the year, and then at SparrowDog.Football on Instagram for the same. That'll be it for today's show, guys. I really do appreciate all of your support. Make sure you click that subscribe button for our premium, in-depth NFL draft coverage right here on Chat Sports all throughout the 2024 offseason.